Welcome in. Oh, hello there. And welcome to Explorations in Environmental Ethics. Today, we'll be exploring two different queries in the field of environmental ethics. The first being, do species really matter? Now, in her piece, Why Do Species Matter? Lillian Marlon Rousseau writes that animals are valued for the simple beauty, for the awesomeness, for the intriguing adaptations, and for their rarity. Now, others argue that animals have some sort of intrinsic value, in that they have value in and of themselves. Take, for example, the redneck. Driven to extremes by an encroaching industrial society, the redneck is forced to eke out a living in a harsh environment. That's why they're known to be extremely territorial. Even the slightest provocation will drive them mad to their killer instincts, which harness can possibly... Oh, oh, gotta run! Oh! Oh! Daddy, help! Chase! The redneck lives in a highly diverse environment, with everything from fowl to felines. These animals provide shelter for the redneck, as well as food. Every day the animals must be fed or they perish, and they also must be protected from the dangers of the forest, such as foxes and hillbillies. The redneck comes daily to feed his animals. This is a rare event. This is the first time this has ever been caught on film. A redneck in his feeding process. As you can see, he feeds his flock in a violent manner, throwing the food directly in their faces. Due to the pressures of development, the redneck over time has become more and more violent. We expect this trend to continue as his land continues to diminish. Normally a consumer of fast food, today the redneck takes to the woods for sustenance. The redneck is known to stand in one spot for hours, waiting for his prey to come. Without his quarry in sight, the redneck has nothing to do but sit and wait. After long hours of toilsome waiting, the redneck becomes so frustrated and inebriated that he literally shoots at anything, anything, that so much as makes a move in the forest. After a successful hunt, the redneck must now undergo the painstaking process of preparing his meat for consumption. The redneck has prepared one of his favorite delicacies, Caucasian jerky. The hard, tough meat provides the redneck with the nutrients he needs to go out and hunt again. Plus, he just really likes meat. A lot. Tastes like shit. Goes down a little smoother, a little licky-licky. Damn. Without the wife, without the domestic, the redneck has to do everything himself. The redneck becomes more and more frustrated. Life becomes harder and harder, and soon he may have to migrate to a warmer climate. Trapped on all sides by an increasing industrial society, the redneck's future remains uncertain. One thing is certain, however, and that is, well, the redneck... I... I don't, I don't know. And welcome back to Explorations in Environmental Ethics, Part 2. For the second half of the show, we'll be exploring the topic of fake nature. Yes, writers such as Martin H. Krieger claim that we should create proxy environments by means of substitution and stimulation. Now, what Martin H. Krieger is suggesting with that statement is that in the event that our natural environment perishes, we will have a synthetic environment to replace it, and therefore humans will continue to be able to enjoy the aesthetic value of nature, a bet nature that is fake and not real. In recent decades, development of robotics has gone in leaps and bounds. Now we have the ability to produce sophisticated, lifelike plastic animals. This is what I call great plastic surgery. <laughs>
amazing, isn't it? So, Mr. Scientist, what exactly are we in the process of developing right now? Well, what you see here is the fruition of 25 years of research by the Academy of Science. We have been able to successfully transplant a DNA structure into the plastic animal to allow it to reproduce. What once was, well, worthless, is now come to full fruition. As you can see, GMO Incorporated, along with the National Academy of Sciences, has created a completely synthetic environment, teeming with fake life. But where there is fake nature, also lies fake danger. That was only an herbivore. Oh. Yes, Mr. Scientist, so now that your test subjects have gone on a feeding frenzy, how, in fact, does this change the methods of your research? As you can see, fake nature can indeed have real life consequences. Now, I think it's time for me to get real and get the hell out of here! This program was brought to you by... Plastic Predators! Hey kids, you love fake nature? Well check out our newest attraction! Plastic Predators! Check out the Plastic Panther! Check out the Plastic Lions! Check out the Rhinoplasty! Even check out our prehistoric section! Plastic Predators by GMO Incorporated!